Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to be a quick guide to re-rolling in Dragalia Lost as of version 2.4. This latest version update brought with it a new tutorial summon showcase where when brand new players start the game, they'll get 50 summons for free with unlimited retries within the game interface itself while the data for the game is downloading. It's a pretty cool alternative to what the old system was, which was you got 10 free summons and then chose a 5 star of your choice from among 9 starter adventurers who have been with the game since the beginning. Instead, with this new system, you get 50 summons right away, you can reroll them as many times as you want, you don't have to uninstall and reinstall the game just to reroll, which was something that always made rerolling Intergalia Lost not really recommended, more cumbersome than it was worth, and it tended to, in most cases, not necessarily guarantee you were even going to get anything good because the showcase that you start on could vary so widely and in some cases it might just have one element of units, in other cases uh, it might be a really lucrative showcase. Now there's a much more level playing field and attractive playing field here for new players where you can pick essentially 50 summons of your choice and reroll those 50 summons as many times as you want. So you can't get every single adventure you want, it's not like you can pick each one individually, but collectively you can reroll those 50 summons. And this showcase has 6% base appearance rates for 5 stars, which makes it comparable to Gala or Gala Remix showcases, some of the more lucrative showcases in Dragalia Lost. On this showcase, everything is uh, at equal appearance rates among 5 star adventurers and among 5 star dragons. So. Essentially a level playing field, nothing has a higher appearance rate than anything else. Likewise for 4 star adventurers and dragons and then for 3 stars. So it is totally random what you get, but the fact that you can retry unlimited times means you do have a good deal of control over what you end up with if you have the patience to attempt to reroll and thankfully you don't have to re-download, reinstall and do all of that. So in this video I'm going to try to give some advice on what I think some of the better adventurers and dragons are to try pull as a brand new player to Dragalia Lost and who I think you should go for when you're re-rolling. One thing I want to say right off the bat is my philosophy on this is that let's say there's a character whose design just speaks to you, you love how they look, you love their aesthetic, you're just excited about having them as part of your team in Dragalia Lost. Just go for that. Honestly, there is a degree to which you can follow your heart in this game. Lots of characters are good, lots of characters can clear endgame content. So to some extent, I would say if you're in that situation where, let's say you're a huge Princess Connect fan, right, and you summoned Pecorine as one of your tutorial summons, it's not out of the realm of reason to just go for it and decide to stick with that batch of 50. Likewise, if you're an Albert fan, or maybe you're a Lily fan, or a Urius fan, or a Forte fan from Grand Blue Fantasy, whatever game called you to Dragalia Lost, or whether there's just a design within Dragalia that you really like, there's definitely no shame in picking a character purely based on the aesthetic or the kit, just thinking they're cool or cute or whatever. So that's my first overall piece of advice. Don't feel bad about just picking somebody you like. Before, when rerolling was more difficult, that's what we tended to tell pretty much all the new players to the game, was just pick the character you like the most, in the long term it's not going to matter all that much. And the same is probably true here, but you do have the ability to make life a little bit easier for yourself in the early going. So as far as if you're not just going to pick based on how much you like a character's appearance or aesthetic or kits or whatever, and you're actually thinking strategically here. Well, I think the couple things you want to think about are, one, the quantity of five stars of high rarity adventurers and dragons you summon, and then two, the actual quality, the characteristics of them, their abilities, how good they are for the meta, how good they are strategically, etc. So as far as quantity goes, because there's a 6% appearance rate here, on average, you're going to get three five stars when you do this tutorial summon, just on average. If you get more than three five stars, that's an above average outcome. So one rule as far as when you stop could be you want to at least see 
three, five stars. That's average. Or maybe you could set a more ambitious rule for yourself and say, hey, I want to at least see four or five stars. Or maybe you want to see five, five stars and you're going to keep re-rolling until you get to that point. It's actually relatively snappy. I've been through this once so far. Once you do exit this appearance rates page though, and uh, when you finish reading these tutorial details here as well, well, once you actually go into the summoning, you can't go back from there. So that's why I'm here on the landing page again, so we can walk through this together and actually look at the different units. But here are all the details as far as the summoning tutorial. So yeah, I think one consideration, one thing you want to think about when you're deciding whether or not to stop is, do you at least have three five stars? Are you at least in an average outcome as far as the quantity of rare characters, rare dragons that you got? And if so, then you're going to also want to look at the quality, the qualitative characteristics of everything you got, see how good it is. So let's walk through some of those now here on the appearance rates tab. Basically what I'm going to try to do is walk through each of the different elements for adventurers and dragons at five star and four star rarity and talk about what's featured there and what I think is particularly good. Um, when it comes to three stars, do not worry at all about uh, three star adventurers or three star dragons. Eventually you will easily summon them all. There's just not a big pool of them and you get three stars more than anything else when you're summoning. So if you're trying to target a specific three star and you happen to miss it and you're 50 summons, do not worry about that. I wouldn't reroll over three stars. Honestly, same is true of the four star dragons. Eventually, it's not too bad to collect them all. And to a degree, it's true of the four star adventurers, but the order in which you get four star adventurers can matter. Some of them are quite influential in the meta, quite good, and having them earlier in your Tregalia journey is going to make life easier for you compared to summoning them later on. So why don't we start here with the four star adventurers because there's not that many that I think really stand out above the rest. And in fact, there's just a few. They're Karina in water. She's a water axe, super powerful at this point in time, probably the strongest four star adventurer. Her skills scale and damage. Her first skill does off the number of buffs she has. And that's led to a lot of influential comps where you stack a bunch of buffs on her. She's really good in all elements of endgame content, in raids as well. She's good at just accumulating buffs and surviving, tanking through everything. She's a really strong unit. She's also a pirate. She's a particularly popular unit in the game. So she's one character I would say. If you're looking at your four stars, that's somebody that you want to see in there. Having Karina in there is going to be a nice thing to have early on. Templar Hope in the Wind Element is another pick that I think is worth mentioning here. Templar Hope doesn't really come into his own until later in uh, Dragalia Lost. In endgame content for auto-battling in particular, he's a really important adventurer to have. But he's also good in co-op in some of that same content, specifically endgame water content, because he's a wind adventurer strong against that. He's a good adventurer to have. He has dual resistances. It's nice to have him available. He's going to make it so you can set up auto teams a little bit easier. Probably a notch below Karina though. And besides Templar Hope, the other adventure I want to mention here is Patia, a Shadow Lance. She is much like uh, Templar Hope, focused on defensive buffs. She's really pretty good for auto battling. She's also good uh, for endgame content and co-op. She does a lot of things really nicely. She also slots in well. Both her and Templar Hope slot in well on a Karina type team by applying more buffs to Karina, which they both do. You get more damage output. And also, these are going to cover some elements that um, you have decent coverage of with your free to play units, but they're going to make your teams a little bit better. So I didn't mention any flame adventurers here. I do think Yudin, who you get for free by default, the story character the protagonist of the game. He's a pretty good flame unit, so having other four-star flame units is less important. Karina does fit a role that your free four-star story, Elisan, does not really fit, so I think it's important to get her. In Wind, you get Ronzel for free just by playing the story, and he's actually a good companion in auto battle and other types of comps with Templar Hope. They work pretty well together, so that's a nice pickup. Another pickup here I'll mention as kind of a fourth is Lowen, probably a fifth here is Pipple. But any of those adventures at four star are sort of the cherry on top to what you're getting with your five star summons. Because I do think eventually if you play long enough, you're going to be able to clean out the four stars at some point in time. 
But if you are able to pick up an early Karina, that is probably the one far and away that's going to help you out the most. All right, so that brings us to the five stars. And I think we're actually going to work our way up because five star dragons probably more important here than five star adventurers. Dragons are really the gateway to power in Dragalia Lost. Adventurers can be hit or miss, they can be replaceable. Some are not, and those are the ones we'll mainly focus on in this video. But many of them, they can be filled, their roles can be filled with other characters. Dragons, in contrast, there's really, really big differences in the amount of power they provide, particularly when it comes to rarity. Three star dragons a lot weaker than four star dragons, which tend to be a lot weaker than five stars, but within the five star rarity, not all dragons are created equal. Some of them are actually quite bad, but some of them are just so far and, and above, above and beyond the rest that uh, I have to point them out. So for five star dragons that you'd really want to see in your re-rolling, Gala Mars is the big one. Um, I think Gala Mars just design-wise has probably the best set of abilities and skill on a dragon right now. Really good aura. You can recharge his skill and use it twice. When you end your shapeshift as Gala Mars, it charges your adventurers uh, all of their skills, including shared skills. He's an excellent dragon in the flame element. Preparing, uh, having him and uh, preparing your Yudin that you get for free, that's already a really solid character to have built up for most wind content to bring flame adventurers to. So I do think Gala Mars stands out as a really strong dragon here. And being a Gala dragon, Gala adventurers, Gala dragons, they're not on every showcase. They only appear on Gala showcases and some Gala remix showcases. And even then, they're usually not an appearance rate up. So this is probably one of the more important things you could snipe here that's going to be difficult for you to get in the future. The other dragon that I want to point out is actually Gauna and Krenna. It's a permanent dragon you could always get in the future, but uh, it's not likely to have an appearance rate up anytime soon from what I can tell. This dragon basically looks like a big Easter bunny. It has the ability to create a recharge zone that charges the skills of adventurers within it. That is apparently a very busted ability. It hasn't been seen really on any other dragons. There's a couple adventures with something like that, but that recharge zone enables a lot of explosive strategies and just having access to this dragon is going to be excellent for many of your support characters. If you like to play healers, if you like to play buffers, regardless of the element they're in, a lot of times they're gonna run down in Krenna. Now, when it comes to the peak of the end game, in particular, Legend difficulty, that is element locked. So Gaun and Krenna, not gonna be dominant in that in particular, but for other types of content, yes, this is an excellent dragon to have. Master difficulty and below, for more Sayati Reckoning, a recent endgame raid, it's excellent. It's a strength aura, gonna help you out in the early game as well. Just a very solid dragon to have. So among the permanent dragons, I do think this is the best dragon. Among the Gala ones, I would say Gala Mars. And the other dragon that I want to point out here is actually, well, there's a couple, but let's start with Gala Thor. So Gala Thor stands out to me because it's hard to find as strong of a light dragon as Gala Thor in the permanent pool. And again, just as I mentioned with Gala Mars, Gala dragons, it's hard to pick them up. It, there's no telling whether they're going to be rerun at a rate up in the future. They may get a remix at some time, but that could be a ways off. There are plenty of characters who have been out for a long time, haven't had a Gala remix where they're actually featured at an appearance rate up. So for some of the same reasons as Gala Mars in terms of availability, Gala Thor's is a dragon I recommend. But the other thing is, when it comes to Mars, no one's quite on the level, but there are dragons here like Konohana Sakuya and Horus and Apollo and Arctos even that can put in good work. Where I think Gala Thor stands out is that the, the next best dragon to Gala Thor is a dragon that's just not available all the time. It's probably Daiko Kuten. It's a New Year's light element dragon, not available in the permanent summoning pool. Your limited seasonal stuff is not going to be on this tutorial summon. And so having Gala Thor to kind of fill the hole in the light element seems strong to me. Yes, there are other alternatives here like Lumiere Pandora and um, Core St. Phoenix to a degree that are, that are okay as well. But uh, the difference being within Flame, you know, some of these alternatives to Gala Mars, they're definitely weaker, 
but they're also available to unbind for free using Draconic Essences by playing the campaign. So having one copy of those is all you need to get started unbinding them, merging them, and uh, in light, there's not really a strong mergeable dragon just yet. That's why having that first Gale of Thors might be more valuable to you. So that's the next dragon I would mention. Another dragon here I want to call out is Shinobi. I actually think probably Shinobi a little bit better maybe than Gale Cat Sith, although Shadow is a weird element where lots of dragons have their niche. Um, just scrolling along here, like Azazel, it's a good dragon. Ramiel, good dragon, can do some unique things. Cat Sith can do some unique things. Andromeda, pretty good for Belina. There's a lot of good dragons here. The reason I want to call out Shinobi is if you even get one Shinobi, as I mentioned with some of the flame dragons, you can unbind it, merge it up for free by playing the story. That's one thing that sets it apart, and it's a very solid dragon used to the end game, used in the early game. Shadow's a really good element as well, so I do think Shinobi's a good dragon. And if I had to mention dragon in the wind element, honestly, they don't stand out as much, but Vayu is a skill damage dragon. You can't unbind it for free yet in the campaign, but still, skill damage dragons tend to be pretty good with only one copy. Probably the dragon I'd want to pick up most here. Otherwise, Gala Reborn Zephyr is a Gala dragon, but one of the weaker ones, Midgard's Armor Zero, is also a strong dragon, almost on par with the Gala, and uh, for some characters, it's going to be better. So... Yeah, I think Wind doesn't really have any huge hitters here. Maybe even Freya might be a little bit better of a hit than any of those because it's a, a more of a utility dragon. But yeah, all of the dragons um, that you can pick up are likely going to be useful to you. Dragons are really strong in Dragalia Lost. It's funny, shapeshifting into them isn't always super strong, but just the aura, the ability, the passive benefit they have just by equipping them, it's really good. So. This is the thing I think you're going to want to focus on the most, and probably Gala Mars if I had to pick a specific dragon here, but there are several good ones that we pointed out. Okay, so now when it comes to the adventurers, here I'm going to be a little bit more critical. It's not that a lot of the adventurers I'm not going to talk about can't do the hardest content, aren't that good, or anything like that. It's just that... There are some adventurers that stand out well above and beyond them in terms of utility. And I'm really going to try to focus on those here. So, you know, scrolling down this list, like Navid, Leia, Mikoto, Reyna, they're all sort of replaceable. Ezlith verges on interesting, but I do think she's replaceable. Some of the comps where she's favored right now are going to go out of style in Legend because of the lack of Gown and Krenna. Gala Laxi, I think, is replaceable. Ramona, replaceable. Gala Mim, probably among all the Flame Adventurers here, one of the ones that stands out the most. She is good in Dragon Transformation for raid events. However, you do have Yudin for free. And Yudin is a pretty effective flame adventurer. You get him for free, you can build him up. He does take a mana spiral, which is a little costlier than what Gala Mim takes to build up. But I do think you could be fine with your Yudin. So flame probably not a big priority as far as which elements you want adventurers for. Um, but Gala Mim, certainly a good adventurer in co-op. Nadine, it's it's a good auto unit. She's good. She's fine. I do love Nadine, but again, probably not that needed here. Gila Cerise, Chelsea, I would say the same. Chelsea, hard to use. Student Maribel, good for uh, speed clears, not much else. Incognito Neferia, okay. Valentine Sildegard, okay. Yukata Cassandra, not that great. Gila Leonidas, the other character besides Mim that does stand out here. He's very good in auto battle and harder difficulty wind element solos where you're using a flame team against wind element and actually kind of serves alongside Yudin. Um, Gala Mim and Yudin can be played together on the same team, but they both want to be actively shapeshifting to make the most out of them. Gala Leonidas, you can just leave him in the back line, have him on autopilot to back up the Yudin. He might even be a little bit better here than Gala Mim if I had to choose, but both pretty strong. So looking at the water element, Xander, Summersiliera, Eugene, Valerio, I think are replaceable to varying degrees. Xander has a good shared skill, Summersiliera has a good shared skill, Eugene has an okay shared skill, Valerio really doesn't have a role that he serves right now. Mitsuba is uh, an interesting character here. So Mitsuba is used in some high-end speed comps, but it's difficult to build up toward those. You need Gaunen Krenna. So you need that water Easter Button Dragon we talked about. 
You're also going to need shared skills from very particular characters, some of which you're going to have to spend elemental tomes to unlock. So I think that's really more of a late game thing, and she's not going to help you that much in the mid game and early game. She's a good adventurer for late game co-op cheese clears, but it's hard to get to that point. So you may pick her up sometime between when you start off and when you get to that point. So it's sort of hard to recommend her. Summer Julieta has a good shared skill. Gail Ellisan has a good utility for autos and solos to a degree because of her flame res, but has some other vulnerabilities. She's okay. She doesn't see a lot of use in hard content and co-op. Lazri doesn't really see any use. Zanefried is kind of interesting, kind of like Gail Mim, good for dragon transformation. Powerful character when you unlock the mana spiral, but also, uh, also pretty good auto battle, roll filler. He's a lance. I just don't think he stands out enough in the world of Karina. Like, I think you would rather just take the 4-star Karina or the 5-star Water Dragon Gauna and Krenna. Catherine also doesn't really stand out. Laranoa Pinon don't really stand out. Lily kind of does because she's good at freezing, um, but she's also available through 5-star Summon Vouchers. She's almost an OG 5-star, released a little after the game started, so there are other ways you could possibly get her and she's a little more available in that sense than some of these other characters. Urias doesn't really see any use. Jiang Xia, pretty good healer, but niche against flame bosses compared to the the healer that we're gonna look at, Grace. And Lapis also just sort of okay, kind of in the middle. So yeah, so Water doesn't really have a lot that stands out here. Water tends to be dominated right now by more Chi strategies and Karina. Moving on to Wind, Gayla Ronzel, Wedding Ellie, Lee, Victor. So scrolling through these, the first thing I see notable is actually Tobias. Tobias has a buff time co-ability, unique to him right now. Really good if you want to play buffers. Continuing on, Summer Norman has an interesting shared skill. Linyu, really good for co-op play. Not as good in auto play, she likes to maintain combos. Has a fun play style, uh, critical hit centric play style. She's a fun character, but also I don't know that she's a dominant force. It's a little bit too soon to say for her. Silas is really good in wind auto battle comps in the end game, solid adventure. And uh, I don't really see anybody else super notable here. Formal Joaquin, probably the most notable thing, being a pretty good shared skill. Some of these characters like Hawk, Luis, have their role. Hawk used to be pretty good when Master Difficulty High Dragons were hard, but at this point in the game, he's not that useful. Um, Luis is sort of an okay roll filler if you want an auto uh, auto bow. Minael's also in fine roll filler in that regard. Luis better in co-op. But yeah, Wind kind of weak here. And uh, Light, Gala Prince stands out a little bit, dragon-centric unit. He's a Gala unit, so it's harder to get him than uh, other things that are shown here. Uh, Gala Luca, also dragon-centric, has a good shared skill, increases the critical rate of dragon skills. Pretty good, but I would probably lean toward Gala Prince among the two. And uh, Summer Cleo is pretty nice here with a good shared skill that's sort of hard to replace, used in a lot of explosive strategies, so she might be one you want to pick up. Also just... Uh, a protagonist, the default character Cleo is very popular among a lot of players. And Galazina is uh, a really nice light healer. If you're going to use one, she is one of the better ones to use. Dual resistances, deals a good amount of damage herself. But light, I, I don't really see anything standing out here. One of the reasons for that being that right now, water adventurers and some of the chi strategies in water are actually better at taking on shadow bosses than light adventurers are. Um, so I would probably not be as inclined to go for something in light. And then when it comes to shadow, this is where a lot of the most broken characters in the game are. Just right at the bottom here, right off the bat, have to acknowledge Grace. You're going to hear a lot about her. She is great for free to play clears and auto battle clears of hard difficulty content. The life shields she creates are excellent. It makes it so that your units basically have a free extra HP bar that bosses have to attack through before they can disrupt your units. So she's fantastic, certainly an adventure you'd want to see here, but I do think she gets a lot better in the late game. In the mid and early game, probably not as good. And she is replaceable to a degree. Um, for light content, light enemies, light bosses, a little bit harder to replace for Kayan specifically on master difficulty, and even for expert autos, not the easiest to replace, but for other elements, 
When she used, used off element, she's not as effective, I find. You can use other healers and do okay with auto setups, but she's gotten a reputation as the best character for auto battles, and I do think it's deserved. It's just there are other alternatives, so if you'd miss out on her, I wouldn't fret too much. Besides her, Gaila Cleo stands out uh, as an excellent adventurer. She's changed in her role. Um, right now, she's used in a utility role in some of the raid speed clears like Marseilladi Reckoning. She's no longer used against Kayan because she's not super effective against him. She doesn't have access to this spell. So she's more of a utility character, but still a pretty strong one uh, besides her. Some of the other characters that stand out here are Belina, but I do think Grace is better than Belina. Belina specifically worth mentioning because she's one of the very few units who can beat Master Kayan solo effectively, but Grace can also do that, and I think Grace has more utility. And Gala Alex is another just strong, all-around DPS, good unit. It's a Gala unit, harder to get, so it's worth mentioning her, but really I think looking back on this, I would probably point to Gala Leonidas and and Wind, maybe Tobias. And after that, Summer Cleo and Grace as actually some of the more meta influential adventures here with uh, Summer Cleo specifically for her shared skill and not as an actual adventurer. And yeah, that's my take on this. Quality plus quantity. So the first thing I said was quantity. You want to have a certain amount of five stars before you stop. And now we've gone through and trying to sort of look at qualitatively which of these adventures are better than others. There's no tier list that I'm going to present to you or share with you about a strict ranking on them, but I've tried to share which of the ones really stand out to me as of where Dragalia Lost is right now and how they might be able to help you. A lot of the adventures I mentioned shine most in the endgame, and that's why I'm mentioning them, because they're really good long-term characters to have, but many of them can also help you early on. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to summon, and basically we're going to stop at a point in which uh, we have something that sort of satisfies the criteria that I mentioned and see what our summoning is. So this batch looks like it's going to be a repeat unless we get something really good here. All right, so no five-star adventures. We do get Patia, who's a nice four-star. We get kind of some junker dragons uh, for our five-star dragons here. So this would definitely be a re-roll. So let's reset and try again. And uh, here we have one five-star dragon right off the bat. Garland is okay. Cat Sheath is okay as well. Pretty good, at least it's a gala. And we're getting some interesting four stars that we'll take a look at at the end as well. And then we got Gala Leaf, a uh, gala adventure, but this is definitely one that I would throw back as well. Xiao Xing, kind of an interesting four star for the shared skill. Gala Leaf, okay, and uh, Leaf fans definitely out there. And our five star dragons are okay. But let's reset again and see if we can get a better roll. You may end up spending a lot of time doing this, judging by how things are going so far. We got Ariel there, also a solid, reasonable dragon, and Natalie. There's Karina, good to see her. And uh, Linnea, so this one, we have we have Karina and Templar Hope. A little bit tempting there, the Ariel also a good companion for Templar Hope. This is probably our best roll so far, but I would probably be a little greedier than this. This is three... This is three five stars, so just about average in terms of the five stars, although we did get some good four stars, and the five stars we got didn't include any of the really remarkable, exceptional ones that I called out, so let's try again. And uh, we may be here for a while. Beautician Zard in there. And Takami Kazushi was our five star on that one. One unfortunate thing is you can't really see the summoning animations on this. I'm going to go ahead and throw this one back. But the reason for that is that the game is actually downloading data while this is happening, so it's more streamlined, it makes it faster to do this, which is nice. Some five stars, but nothing particularly remarkable. And uh, Catherine there, Gil Leaf. Good mix, but again, none of the standouts, so we'll reset. We may be at this a while. Let's go for at least one of the things that we called out earlier, and then we'll call it a day. 
Radiant Chuan Song. And nothing on that circle. It's going to be fascinating to see the mix of characters new players start with because it's been relatively homogenous in the past, so I'd be very curious to read in the comments uh, what your summons have been like. That was a Belina. Uh, Belina, one of the better adventurers, but only one five star. I have to ship this one back. Uh, this is definitely below average here, so gotta send it back and go for a little bit better. Freya, pretty good dragon, and Gala Poseidon, nice dragon. Shinobi, one of the dragons I like, and Valerio, a character I like, but not a particularly good one. Formal Joaquim, a good character. Ariel, a good dragon. Another Belina, Duke Belina. Oh, or maybe we hadn't gotten Belina this time, I can't remember. But uh, we got Valentine Tildegard. Yeah, this is absolutely a haul I would stop with. So, not perfect. It doesn't have some of the best characters we mentioned in this video. But if you look at this, we have five five-star adventurers, we have four five-star dragons, we have a nice selection of four-star dragons as well. Our four-star adventures aren't particularly good, but Formal Hakim, really nice shared skill, just good wind adventure overall. Belina is going to give us access to a way to clear some high-difficulty light content. Valentine and Tildegard, solid healer. Not particularly remarkable. Kirstie of Valeria, also not that remarkable. But our dragon selection is nice here. Freya can be unbound for free using Draconic Essences. Same thing with Shinobi. And uh, Ariel, just a good dragon. And Gale Reborn Poseidon, also a good dragon in water. Not the Easter Bunny dragon, but pretty good. We'll do one more just for fun, but that would probably be a stopping point for me if I were really brand new to the game. You can always go as long as you want on this. And uh, we have Karina there, so this looks interesting, but uh, nothing else that stands out too much. So I would have probably taken the earlier batch above this one for sure. In any case, y'all, that is going to do it for this guide on rerolling. I hope this has been helpful to you. Went a little bit longer than I expected here, but it was fun going through all the characters, kind of discussing where Dracilia is at in its current state. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you're interested in listening to a beginner guide, I have prepared the audio of my beginner guide that I plan to release later in this week. So if you want to check that out, I'll post it at the end of this video. It'll be linked to in the description below as well. Still working on the visuals for that to make it all come together, but if you just want to listen to it more as a podcast, that is available now if you're a brand new player. Definitely recommend checking it out. Once again, that is going to do it for today, everyone. So thank you as always for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.